You would have thought, given how fun movie mistakes are to catch and share and be smug about and I get weapons grade smug boys and girls, that Hollywood would have pulled its pants up and its socks up and tucked its socks into its pants. I don't know, I'm still drunk from New Year's. We all make mistakes, especially Jules' parents and their decision to keep feeding him as a boy, and these are some that really stuck out this year. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are the 10 dumbest movie mistakes of 2016. Number 10, Tommy Lee Jones and his lines, Jason Bourne. In the very first scene of the revived but still exactly the same same Bourne sequel, Tommy Lee Jones' character appears and we see him clearing various objects into his briefcase. Unfortunately for Jones, those objects include a notepad with his actual lines for the scene written on it. Squint and you can make out this is Dewey, although Jones actually just says Dewey in the scene's final cut, followed by how badly, is there any attribution, and I want a briefing in my conference room in one hour. Complex things to remember. Number 9, Pixar doesn't know what nearsighted means, finding Dory. An uncharacteristically absent-minded gaffe from Pixar comes when clumsy whale shark destiny is introduced and a tour guide mentions that she's nearsighted, which would imply that she can see objects up close just fine, but struggles with distant objects. Nothing weird or off about that, right? However, Destiny's most memorable trait in the film is that she has trouble seeing things close up and frequently bumps into them, which would in fact suggest that she's far-sighted, which is in fact the opposite. Bad fish. Number eight, modern day thermostat, free state of Jones. It's now getting to the stage where you almost want to see Matthew McConaughey slum it with a bad performance in a movie just for old time's sake. Luckily, the team behind free state of Jones decided to pay homage to his former badness in their editing work for this unfortunately boring war film. After plantation owner James Eakin swears an oath, he returns to his home and upon opening the door, a modern day thermostat is clearly visible on the wall, out of focus, but still easy to spot. Are we supposed to believe that Eakins is a time traveler? Because that might make the film a bit better. Number seven, London London Calling Two Years Early, The Conjuring 2. Another historical goof in a period set movie. If you're going to bother putting something in the past, the least you can do is pay attention to the year that you choose. <clears throat> and yet, in the first scene after the movie's opening title sequence, it takes place in Enfield 1977, with The Clash's iconic tune London Calling playing over a montage of London's most famous monuments. That is a full two years too early, though, as London Calling didn't actually come out until the tail end of 1979. You can argue that director James Wan was merely trying to evoke a certain mood, but it's not like the UK music scene was exactly wanting for smash hits back in 1977. Number six, German police in Bucharest, Captain America Civil War. Captain America Civil War was the best comic book movie of the year. Don't at me, DC nerds, but it's not flawless, particularly in terms of its geographical awareness. When Bucky is being all conspicuous and moody in Bucharest, Romania, he's spotted and assaulted by a SWAT-like police squad. The soldiers, however, are wearing polizei identifiers on their clothing, where the Romanian equivalent of that would in fact be policia. Politia? Politia. I don't speak Romanian. The simple explanation is that Berlin doubled for Bucharest during shooting, so the production only had German-style SWAT outfits sitting around and couldn't source any legit Romanian ones in time. Number five, that ever-changing hair, the Divergent series, Allegiant. It's hard not to be distracted by the constantly changing hairstyle of Andy Bean in the latest Divergent movie, provided that you bothered to see it, and apparently you didn't. Sometimes the sides of his head have been shaved extremely short, and sometimes it's clear it hasn't been shaved much at all. This isn't just apparent in individual scenes, but also between shots in the same scene, suggesting that significant portions of the film were reshot, and either Andy Bean couldn't shave his head again due to conflict with another role, or perhaps, more likely, nobody could be bothered. Number four, shoddy journalism, Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. In Batman vs Superman's epilogue sequence, Perry White reads the Daily Planet's latest newspaper which notes that Clark Kent was killed reporting the movie's climactic battle and contains an obituary. Presumably, the paper doesn't actually care all that much about him dying, because if you look closely, the same wall of text is repeated over and over. I mean, were there no Warner Brothers slave interns they could have beaten into writing a page text. Number three, inaccurate New York skyline, Sully. Despite being acclaimed as an affectionate document of the miracle on the Hudson, Sully contains one mistake that's sure to be majorly distracting to New York residents in particular. During the flashback scenes of the incident, 432 Park Avenue skyscraper is plainly visible numerous times in the skyline of New York, despite construction taking place from 2012 to 2015, while the incredible event itself happened way back in 2009. That puts a whole new spin on the whole, you know, miracle thing. Number two, Deadpool's hand, Deadpool. Deadpool is apparently one of the most mistake-filled movies of 2016, but also one of the funniest and most financially successful, so who cares? I don't. I know, right? However, some of them are too dumb to ignore. Just after Deadass has chopped his left hand off with a knife, a very memorable thing since, you know, features him cutting his own hand off with a knife, he escapes from Colossus and jumps off the bridge to freedom. And when the shot cuts, his left hand is suddenly back intact and his right one is a severed one. It's not like it couldn't have been fixed in post either, you know, just by literally flipping the shot. 
and number one, the droids get left behind Rogue One. Spoilers for Rogue One incoming. At the end of Rogue One, which was very good, I thought, fight me, there's a bit of fan service showing everyone's favourite married couple, R2-D2 and C-3PO, watching a fleet of spaceships take off for Scarif. Part of that fleet is the Tantive Four with Plastic Princess Leia on board. However, because New Hope takes place instantly after Rogue One, R2 and 3PO would have had to have been on that ship rather than cattily watching it take off. In one simple goof, the entirety of New Hope is undone. Leia can't find a droid to give the plans to, Yavin 4 is destroyed, and the Empire never has to strike back. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com, and I'll see you soon.